Can you guys hear me and see my screen? Oh yeah, there's a 4.9. I'm on that old school 3D coat. Let's do this. Any questions, feel free to start asking and friends. I'm gonna do a little bit of 3D and uh, a little bit of 2D. Should be fun skis. While I'm waiting for people to ask questions and as I'm installing this new software, I'm drinking some water. No questions, huh? I have one. There you go. Don't be afraid. <laughs> uh, so one of my characters can transform. I didn't get to, to a them. car. Tight. <laughs> I didn't get to them this week, but I might try to do it over the weekend. So I was wondering what's a good way to portray like their like regular human form, for example, and some kind of monster form. In a design. Um, usually just landmark features. So for instance, so for instance, if I'm designing a character that's like a like a monster that has like a large snout or something. And then they have like some sort of um, <coughs> pattern. Or like some sort of horns. Whatever that may be. So the character, if I'm doing human, it could be cool to give him like a, a large nose to match that snout. Right, almost as if it's reflective of the, the personality type. And then also, if I'm like dressing this character a certain way, like this character is wearing like some sort of hood, then I can give him like some sort of horn patterns to match as much as possible to this. And then this could also be garmented similarly as well. You know, does that make sense? So basically echo as much as you possibly can from one design to another, okay? Okay. Excuse me. And this, this doesn't just include like garmenting, like also think about personality, right? Like even like the angling of this shape, I could have like maybe angled the head a little bit more in that direction too, you know? Mm -hmm. So that way, that way, like everything about this guy kind of feels he belongs to this, this transformation, you know, um, I forget which Mega Man is, but there's a good Mega Man game where there's these characters that who ride mechs and all the characters look like they're mechs. And it's like a really great interpretation, but I don't know exactly where to find it. I don't spend too much time looking for it, but this, this principled idea should still resonate oh thank you yeah absolutely i do agree and i will install it hey uh anthony i had a quick question all right you have five um, seconds go okay so <laughs> advice is <laughs> um no but uh, i was just curious about uh when applying for different companies uh if you have any advice for uh, cover letters or getting references, oh, okay. things like that. Are, are they even worth um, trying to get things like references, reaching out to people through LinkedIn? Yeah, those, those are always useful. Um, I think it's just a 
per job basis. Some jobs would need you to do that. Some don't. Okay. That's pretty much it. <laughs> you know, mm. uh, every cover letter that I have ever, um, every co cover letter letter that I've ever written, um, I essentially hold on, I'm going to close this. Uh, every cover letter that I've ever uh, written, I just I just went online and found one, and it just oh really yeah, and just uh, <laughs> and then just like replaced a lot of the words with what I thought okay. <laughs> made sense. Does okay. that make sense? Okay. Oh, huh. So yeah, there's really no point on spending like three hours on trying to make the perfect cover letter type thing. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, oh. Yeah, I think that like whenever, um, I think that whenever people uh, do these cover letters, they, um, oh yeah, this is dope. Okay. Uh, whenever people do these cover letters, they they th yeah they think that it has to be like this crazy personal thing i mean that helps mm -hmm. like if you really 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 love a company and you really want to gush i think there's a way to do mm -hmm. that professionally and uniquely for that for like each company okay you know but the reality is if the company wanted to hire you they would have already this would have this conversation would have already begun you know what i mean right right um and the cover letter would be more of a formality, right? Okay. Than uh, a reality. Okay. So, yeah. so, so hold on, let me see something. Type, it is instance, amazing. Um, I forgot, I haven't used, I haven't used this in, in a while. That's I've never right. seen 3D code, but the way you're extruding that, it seems like it's uh, kind of like ZBrush with the geometry. Yes, sir. Huh. Um, so, I'm probably not going to be more than this upper torso part. So this looks cool. Um, so like the the formality of it is the part that I want to make sure you, you understand. Okay. It's, it's okay. like every time I've been asked to do a cover letter, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, yeah. it was never, it was not what got you the job. Yeah. It was not what got me the job. It was more like you need to do it. Uh, references, mm -hmm. same thing. You just needed to do it. Okay. Okay. So that's, this is why I encourage not to worry too much about it. Oh, like okay. the only thing you should be worrying about, is those networks that you've, you're creating and the quality of artwork that you're making. That's mm -hmm. it. Um, okay. If you're worrying about like the cover letter, then that, that means your work is just not good. <laughs> you know, like if it's like, <laughs> yeah, you're, like you're like really like stressed out, like, oh, the cover letter is gonna make me get the job. No, it's not. Yeah, okay. That's just, that's just not reality, you know? Okay. Um, and I mean, I could I could see it do the opposite. I could see how it could get you, how it could not get you a job, right? Like, okay. like if you wrote like a cover letter that was really racist or something, <laughs> you know? Like if you were like yeah. in your cover letter, like I really want to work for you guys because I really love how you guys stick it to the blacks. And, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and, then, and then they're just like, yeah. what? What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> and yeah. then they, they don't they hire you, right? Right, because your work doesn't necessarily say that you think this. It's just cool artwork, <laughs> right? You know, so they they would have not have got a glimpse of your your innate racism, <laughs> but in your cover right. letter, uh, it's like that. Same with the references, like your references, like is the Ku Klux Klan, like you did, you know, banner, <laughs> art, banner art for them. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. you're like, <laughs> yeah, I did some graphic design for the KKK. <laughs> <laughs> That could probably land you no job. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, otherwise, if I they don't, <laughs> yeah, if they did not reach out to you in the first place, uh, I just can't see them. Like I can't just I can't see how the cover letter would be. <laughs> yeah. 
that they no, that's fair. Because something I've noticed, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but something I've noticed wrong. is you should. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, um, no. But uh, basically, what I've seen is that uh, it seems if you're if you're good enough, you apply, let's say, Blizzard, uh -huh. uh, you'll hear back from them one to two weeks. Uh, but for example, if I apply and I don't hear back for two months, and then you get you know typical rejection letter, uh, thanks for applying, all that stuff. Uh, it seems like usually if you're going to get hired or if your work catches their attention, it seems like they're going to reply relatively quickly, even for these big companies. Is that about right? or No, actually, um, I mean, it depends on the company, but specifically for Blizzard, that's not necessarily true. Um, okay. Blizzard's a mess when it comes to hiring. Uh, in fact, oh, a, lot really? of large, a lot of large studios are more of a mess than you would like to imagine. Um, so Blizzard... Uh, this is a really great story where there was this guy that they interviewed and hired, right? Okay. They hired this artist. Uh, mm -hmm. And he, um, he, never, uh, he never heard back from them. Uh, like he, he had the in-person interview. It went mm -hmm. really good. They were really happy with him. You know, okay. and he felt pretty good about it too. And there, and you know, they were saying stuff like, "We'll get back with you. We'll get in touch with you." You know, uh -huh. like, like all the kinds of phrasing and wordplay that makes it seem like it's a go, right, right. Uh -huh. And um, and he just doesn't hear from him literally in two weeks, so he's just like, "Oh wow, oh what? I guess I didn't get the job." You know? Yeah. Like that's what his thought was. He thought like, I guess I didn't, it didn't work out. Right. And then sure enough, uh, he gets a call from them and they're like, Hey, we just noticed that you haven't been showing up for work for about like a what? week. And he's like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> they're <laughs> like, yeah, cause you were supposed to start like a week ago, whatever, like all this stuff. Right. And he's like, no bitches. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> nobody, reach no, back? Yeah, nobody reached back to me. And they're like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, I've, I've been waiting for you guys to respond to me. Like, I, didn't, I didn't know I had the job. And wow. like, oh, what? Yeah, you have the job. What the? And, then, and so, so it was Damn. a whole, whole lack of communication, communication. Within, within, the, within Blizzard themselves. And um, that's what happens when you have a studio of like over 6,000 people worldwide. Um, right. Uh, when I worked there, um people would always like 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 people like my friends and even my students uh would be like oh like so and so works there and i'm like mm -hmm. i don't know that person <laughs> you know like <laughs> like i've literally like like my team was maybe uh uh under 100 people okay you know and the 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 uh, on site blizzard campus has close to like four thousand, like three to four thousand employees, I believe. Damn. Yeah. Right. Wow. We 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 or they had like a whole campus that is gated off just for, and they mm -hmm. have like four buildings, and each building has like five floors or three floors. Actually, right. I'm exaggerating. And then each floor has like hundreds of people. And then right. that was not enough. They had to like go get like a whole another set of buildings across the street, <laughs> you know? Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. yeah. Um, and I, I was one of those buildings that was across the street because we couldn't, there was not enough room it for couldn't us. Couldn't fit. Yeah. Um, whenever yeah. we do board meetings, like big, team meetings i mean not board meetings big team mm -hmm. meetings like the whole team we would we we would rent out a or they would rent out a i see keeps talking like we as if i am part of that company no i, they, I get they, it they they would rent out like a, a whole movie theater oh wow yeah so i'm like yeah i don't know that person <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know like, like oh so and so works at the starcraft i'm like cool then i'm on the cinematic scene I do not know <laughs> <laughs> like I'm sure they're great uh, I right. don't know because uh, there's usually not that much a uh, chance to interact with other people in their in their regular schedule anyway right I guess besides lunch but yes totally hmm. 
Anyway. Okay. Yeah. No, thank you. Wait, hold on. My wife's calling me. Give me a second. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> hey, Jerry, I got a question. Yeah, go for it. Um, what should I work on right now as an artist to get past this whole line art stage? Because I feel like I've been at it for a while and just not going anywhere. Well, what do uh, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to achieve? Because that's that's um, too broad of a question. Right? Uh, like, how do I improve? <laughs> like, how, what's the meaning um, of life, AJ? Well. I, Initially, um, I was taking this class was having the uh, goal of like render much better, uh -huh. but I don't think I was, but I don't think I'm like I'm, I'm getting there right now, because I'm this is what week two we're going to week three. Yeah, totally. And I'm still doing line art. Yeah, so if you want to start to to paint. Um... You can start to paint right now if you want. It's actually not a big deal. Um, the The task at hand was mostly focused on your designs because the problem with with painting uh, without a sense of where your design's supposed to be is that you're as you're discovering your design through painting, it's it's really challenging, and it becomes uh, it becomes this problem of you're constantly battling against your design sensibilities mm -hmm. versus actually painting. See, whenever you see someone like me paint, uh, it looks like that I'm um, like, I am like, it's just fluid, right? Like it just looks like painting and designing is one and the same. Mm -hmm. And wait, what the heck happened here? Um, and the reality is that it is that, you know, uh, but like I've, I've acquired the know-how and the skill to be able to kind of separate the two in my mind at the same time, but not, not everybody can do that. So if you were to, to, if you're still feeling like your designs aren't there and you're like, oh, I don't know, like painting's not necessarily going to fix that. Right. I mean, it's a completely different process. In fact, I mentioned this, like, a, I think in a different class, how uh, being an illustrator is different from them being a concept artist. Because a right. concept artist is really, really good at designing and coming up with ideas and all that stuff. Uh, illustrator can paint really well. Like if I gave an illustrator one of your designs, right? right. Like the, as they are right now. And I just asked them to like illustrate that and paint it in like a really epic way. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. they could probably do a really good job and make your designs look better than you could have ever imagined. Right. right. Um, so so the question is, if you're happy with what you got in terms of design, you can actually begin painting some of them right now. I know, like, for instance, like the pig, you don't have to worry about that guy right yet. Like, you're still designing him. But the other guys, if you want to begin to start to practice painting, uh, yeah, I actually don't think it's a bad idea to get started on that. Okay. Um, and in um, terms of practicing, like, let's say you want to just practice painting, and you don't really want to, like, worry about design just yet. You could do that without uh, – you could always do that without actually um, – without actually designing just, just paint. studying other people's content. yeah or just paint just like paint like a random character that's supposed to be mm -hmm. just generic and has no value as a design you're just actually just practicing just painting you're just practicing moving the paint brush around you know mm -hmm. like a good example of this for what i used to do was i would just like paint like shoulder pads or armor or portraits you know i wouldn't actually try to paint something crazy mm -hmm. you know Okay. like until it's game time until it's like time to design something mm -hmm. so like uh were my designs like really problematic or un unclear in terms of that from what you were saying yeah originally they were yeah right mm -hmm. because you were you're aiming for uh god of war right um, yeah like and then i was or... saying yeah and i was saying you need to push the designs they need to be crazier right mm -hmm. uh, because if you're if if you were to just paint them as they were originally, they weren't as, as decorative, you know, mm. 
Right. Uh, and we saw a little bit of this with, I believe it was like uh, uh, land stuff, right? Where sh her stuff, uh, when just through line art, looked really interesting and cool. But I, I told her that eventually when you start to paint it, we're going to probably see some deficiencies of design. Mm -hmm. And it's actually good to practice putting that into your line art. So that way when you begin the design, you can already have that. Uh, that. Okay, that's why you told me to do it in a really decorative way. So the design is 100% there when I yeah. paint it. I so it's much, yeah, it's much easier to know what you're supposed to add. Not like then, like paint your thing, it feels really stale. And then you're saying, you're saying to yourself, oh, my design feels like shit, mm -hmm. right? Because like the painting is not going to save it. Uh, unless right. you're like put in an illustration, put dynamic lighting and, and do all that crazy stuff. But as a concept artist, you might never really do that, right? You're never going to put your character like flying around doing some crazy bullshit, you know, yeah. unless you're designing that specific thing, you know, a concept design again is supposed to answer questions, right? right. It's not supposed to be the final product. It's supposed to be the, the road to the final product, okay. you know? Mm -hmm. Like right now, I'm like I'm working on a project, and I'm like designing stuff in VR. You know what I mean? Like I'm doing concepts in VR, and it's not what you would imagine. It's like real dirty. It's real shitty. <laughs> okay, like it's not like something that I would put in my portfolio. Uh, but it's like as a tool, right? Mm -hmm. As a tool to show my director where my vision's at. For this design um it's really good like mm -hmm. they love it you know because okay. like for instance I, I can give you kind of a, a tidbit of what it is it's like i'm i'm designing these virtual sets right mm -hmm. uh, because the the thing that i'm working on is like a cinematic and uh -huh. they're going to be doing you know virtual sets like they're going to have like, those te the technology oh, where they have okay. a camera uh, i know what you mean yeah yeah and they're like walking around in like an open space but like they have yeah. like an ipad and they're looking at this virtual world. Right. So, so designing 2D doesn't seem as, uh, as effective as a communication tool. Right, for what the need to be able to, to see it on the VR device. Yeah, and so like, um, well, it's not, it's not a VR thing. Like the project is not VR, right? No. Is but it AR? No, it's not AR, it's just a cinematic. Oh, just a cinematic. But they are gonna be using a virtual set to film it, to get the, like a live action feel, like a feeling uh, of a real camera and real movement. Mm -hmm. And using VR, what I can do is simulate that mm -hmm. so that like when, when they actually are uh, shooting the film, mm -hmm. they know, they have a sense of how they would need to be moving through this environment. Mm -hmm. uh, not, the, not through just cool images, but like actual practical solutions. Mm -hmm. So then, so that on game day, you know, the day when they start to film, they're not like, oh, you know what? We didn't anticipate this, this, this object in the way, or we didn't anticipate um, this much clearance, or we didn't anticipate that it was going to be a ground to walk over. You know what I mean? Like all of this stuff um, that they didn't anticipate uh, because it's hard to do that in 2D. You can only do so much in 2D. It's why whenever I design, uh, I designed some stuff in 3D versus uh, just painting it too. Because some stuff just work better as concepts if you just do it in 3D. Mm. And some things work really well in 2D. So for instance, the same project that I'm talking about, I did a lot of concepts in 2D, right? But it's like the high concept stuff. It's like, like here's all of the moments that are gonna happen in the cinematic and I just illustrated them so we could talk about it at a higher level, you know? I like the keyframes. Yeah, like the keyframes and all that good, good stuff. Okay. You know? But but that's my point. Like, um, you know, as a designer, that's the focus. And so when you're painting your designs just for like really good looking images, like I don't want you to get confused that that's, that's uh, as valuable as just having good designs. Like some of, the, some of the stuff you've already done is already at that level of concept art, right? It just needs to 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 be a little bit cleaner and a little bit clear clear in the line art. But then also, if you are painting it, think of the painting as more of like a, it's more of like a a way to essentially, um, hold on, it's a, it's a way to actually just 
like uh, uh, convey your ideas more clearly when you paint it. Okay. Okay. So the more you paint it, that's what you're essentially doing. You're just creating more of more clarity for like a modeler or whatever, whoever's looking to look at it next. Mm. They're going to have a sense of like uh, understanding of what you're trying to do with it. Okay. But yeah, if you want to start <coughs> painting now, of course, go for it, man. Just, just keep in mind like the reason why uh, it's valuable to have solid line art. Right. I, I've always valued line art. Um, I thought like my sketch was enough to convey that. So that's why I was a little confused why you asked me to do another passive line art. Well, I wanted you to finish them entirely, you know? Because I know the the monkey is still in the works and the pig, but there is there is there is some reality that you might get that done faster sooner than later. So uh, I respect that. So yeah, you you just be the judge of what you think makes sense moving forward. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, man. Any other questions? I have another one. Oh my god, you're stealing <laughs> all the questions, dude. Just kidding, go ahead. Do you use LinkedIn at all? I do. So I so I'm right now I'm a software engineer. I think I mentioned that before. So I have yeah. a lot of that stuff on my LinkedIn. So I was trying to figure out how to handle the art side and the software engineering side because I still need the software you engineering might, side. Yeah, you might need to you might need to make a different uh, account. I don't think you're supposed to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's true, but uh, you should. Okay. Um, if you can, if they're like, no, fuck that. Uh, you <laughs> might need to need to make another email and all that stuff too. That's what I'm getting at. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. you might need to just create a alternate ego. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, just because it's weird to just have it all on one, right? And yeah. you want to like, and uh -huh. you want to like genuinely build your other LinkedIn to have people follow you and care about your artwork, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to get confused, right? And what I mean by this is like, you don't want to like have like, like 500 connections or something like this, right? And, mm -hmm. and then, and then you got like 520 connections now all of a sudden, Right, you don't want to. You don't want to just then assume those twenty extra are all from art. Mm -hmm. You know, what if they're not? You know, what if it's only two, and then the other eighteen are still software engineering people? You know, yeah. Where if you made okay. a very genuine art only LinkedIn, and you get ten people to connect with, then you know those are our people just for the art. You know, you're not going to be as confused. Uh, with the numbers and the metrics. Does it make okay. sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that would be that would be the rush now behind that. Otherwise, yeah, you're gonna get confused. Hope that answers your question. It's pretty simple. Any other questions? All right. Um, I can I go? Yeah, you can leave. See you later, dude. I'm just kidding. Yeah, of course, dude. Go you work. are so mean today. Um, <laughs> I'm just super you, sarcastic. You mentioned working in VR, and I remember probably a couple of years ago now, um, I was listening to one of your uh, streams, and you were saying that you're going to see uh, a lot of the future in it, and like VR, AR, stuff like that. Uh, uh -huh. When it comes to like more realistic stuff, it, excluding like anime uh do you think that what we're doing here the 2d uh drawing painting is it is it even going to be relevant in a few years will it survive i mean do, do you still see value in it or do you think it'll be replaced with more of like 3d and VR? um yeah so that's a great question and um the answer is yeah of course and so so uh, one of the things that I think there's this really good uh, video I saw on YouTube and they were talking about this very thing 
where a lot of the people now are like, in, they're like a bunch of high school kids. And they're genuinely like concerned for their future um, because like the stuff you just mentioned, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, there was, uh, this engineer and he was explaining that we need like, um, oh, fuck, I forget the word. It was good. I, I saved this video. I'll watch it later or I can send it to you. So you guys can watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like he, he's essentially talking about like social currency. Like we need to kind of like have like information, uh, like in, in basically information uh, dividends of some sort. So like your information and all that stuff being acquired by all these companies, they should, they should give you some of that profit. So for instance, if someone advertises to me um, or if an advertiser takes information from me to understand my lifestyle and the people around me and the people that I associate with, you know, then whenever the advertiser or Google or whatever takes that information from me and uses that information to then make better advertisements for other users, I should get a cut of that. You know? Are you talking about that guy who co-founded Facebook and then left? No, I don't think that's the same yeah. guy. But it is it is a guy that like that co-founded one of these big thingies, yes. And he did leave and he got like dreads and stuff. Um so we might be talking about the same person, but I, I, I'm almost certain he didn't co-found Facebook. Um, so anywho, uh, he might have been like a chairman or something. I don't know, but definitely not a mm-hmm. co-founder. Um, so, so anyways, the point I'm making is that, you know, um, like the, the future is kind of scary because we have all these, you know, um, these like, what's that? What the? Uh, we have all of these things that are coming into the fray, you know, and and a lot of people are afraid. They're afraid they're like whatever they're learning now is not going to be relevant, and that's always true for a lot of different types of j- jobs and careers out there. But let me just say that like um, the jobs that are going to have the most value is going to be the jobs that are more creative. Okay, <clears throat> because because even like um, like I'm meeting actually with a guy who used uh, AI to paint someone else's line art in my style, and it was bonkers, dude. I was like, "What? That's dope!" Uh, and a lot of people were like, "We're fucked," <laughs> you know. And I'm like, "No, like because here's the thing." Um like I could potentially use this tool for myself, right? And there'll be no problem. And I can see how other people would want to uh, utilize this in a, in a negative way, right? Like steal someone else's style and then paint it in their style, something that they couldn't have done before, you know? But what this will do is a couple of things. Well, our copyright laws are gonna improve. We're gonna have to change them. But also, like, there's going to be an opportunity for style licensing. And that's going to be pretty fascinating to see how that ends up. But, but even with that being said, you, you would have that original artist demonstrating genuine value, right? Like, they're the reason yeah, why. I was, st- I was going to say, you still have to exist to create that style. For yeah. For someone to use yeah, Exactly. It. So I would have incredible value because I'm the one that people are, are realizing that this is the style from because there's going to be a, 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 a real outcry for sure in defense of artists in this position, you know, and this is what I'm getting at. Like, even if you take the worst case scenario, like let's say people just jack my style, right. Um, and just use it. However, uh, I would still be able to say that's clearly the way I paint, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we can, we can document it. We can look at what did they use <laughs> you know, in this machine learning program, and I can sue them very clearly, very honestly. It would not be hard. Um, but then, what they'll demonstrate is that, like, that would be protected pretty vigorously. And the things that I can see could happen after that, that would be hard to to define, is let's say someone takes uh, my painting 
and some other artist paintings and like mashes all that into this machine algorithm to see what that comes up with, then you're gonna have like a whole new breed of artists that might come out of that, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that will come up with like these unique styles that nobody can really put their finger on, but we could still necessarily, we could still go in there and kind of get a sense of it. But at that point I would actually maybe defending the people that would be doing that kind of mixing of other art to make this new unique style, right? Mm -hmm. From a, a, a plethora of their favorite artists, but the reality will still be true that you would still need to be able to draw something decent. <laughs> to be able for this algorithm to to work you know there there is a chance there is a chance that you might not have to be able to draw at all you could just take all these different light artists all these different painters and just really have like a whole different painting style but even then it might not be refined or as qualitative and necessarily um as good as somebody who would be painting it for now <laughs> okay <laughs> and and someone like me would definitely be using that tool especially if i can i know for a fact it could paint like me I, and i could just do like a rough sketch and it will just paint it and figure it out uh -huh. Uh -huh. like fuck yeah dude because then i'll save even more time <laughs> on my own work and there is no uh, copyright problems right because it's my work mm -hmm. i'm just like expediting my own process even faster you know and so like people who actually like there there might be a, a backwards uh effect that people didn't anticipate that artists who already have that style that you can you know throw into this machine learning algorithm are now able to expedite their painting process and someone someone like Sparth and myself who already like are really fast painters uh, will become even faster but people who let's say are really slow painters like um Wang Wei or Brad Rigney the two people I mentioned earlier now maybe they can paint as fast as me using this tool. And now they're pumping out artwork all the time that's super dope, you know? Mm -hmm. That gets them at least like 80% of the way there and then they can take the rest, they can finish it from there, you know? Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that that creative job is the job, one of the mm -hmm. last jobs to go, right? Like mm -hmm. a person who's in leadership, leadership positions, like someone who is going to be able to teach other people, help guide other people, you know? um like manage teams but even that job will eventually go there is definitely going to be a moment where all the jobs go right <laughs> um when that happens i have a harder time determining when that is i think we're going to start to get a if i had a really guess um and this guess is just entirely speculative um it's not based off of any real research but if i had a guess i would imagine sometime in the 2040s so not too far from now, <laughs> okay? But if you guys work really hard in the next 10, five to 10 years, you, hopefully you guys will have a footing in this industry, um, mm -hmm. you know? But still, I'm, like, what do you mean? Even if uh, everything- What I mean is like literally a machine can do every job. There will be no job that, and that will be the first, we will have the first clue that this is true in 2040, if not sooner. <laughs> no, but- even like imagination because someone yeah, of course will still have i mean well then we'll just have I mean, more competition it's i mean like quite literally every job would be be able to be done by a machine in the mm -hmm. 24 if i had to guess in the 2040s is when we start to first see this happening well, what the hell are we gonna do then like everyone they're <laughs> like well we'll just be like in a wall -E, just sitting in chairs and looking at screens all day <laughs> i mean yeah maybe i mean like here, here's the here's the here's the thing it's human arrogance to think that nothing that we can do or nothing that is a, it's human arrogance to think that everything that we can do uh that's human cannot be done by something else like it's inherently our skill right um but the reality is that we're 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 physical products of this universe we're nature we're part of nature right and only we are the ones that have defined that machines are different than humans we're the ones that have made this definition you know not nature so if we look at the grand scheme of nature like we don't look at an anthill and think that's technology we think of that as nature like an ant colony and the building of like termite mounds and all of these great structures that bugs and 
uh, other animals create on their own, like dams made by beavers. We look at that as natural, part of the natural order, right? Just because they don't have iPhones, <laughs> you know, these beavers. But technically, that is still technology, isn't it, right? Like if we look at it in the sense of we think of how we think of technology, it's just our own human arrogance, right, that makes it say mm -hmm. that it's not. But the reality is like, why is it, why, why can't we say that a, a smartphone, why is that also at the same level as a dam from the beaver? In my perspective is it, it is, you know, it's just that it's clearly way more advanced and way more complicated, right? That's not disputable. That's obviously true. But there is nothing ethereal about how any of these things have been created, okay? There's nothing magical about any of the stuff that we've made. Like, yes, we've sent rockets to the moon, but that's not, there's nothing that, that did not lead up to that that was mysterious, right? There's no, like, some sort of weird intervention, you know? This is my point, right? <clears throat> and so, so there, is a real, there is a real conundrum that you're, yeah, you're getting real anxious about it, I, I can sense. And you no, should be. no, actually, no, no. Okay, but you should be well, if you're not, <laughs> because it is, a, it is a real problem that a lot of people are, even today, like a lot of politicians are really concerned about. Because yeah. these, these same things will lead to civil unrest. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so, so when I say a machine can do whatever a human can do, this is based off of the simple principle that our brain isn't as, um, as uh, technically impossible to create as we might imagine it is because yeah. it, we have it now. Okay. Yeah. Where it's a meat, we go three pound piece of meat floating in like a cartilage of bone. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we just need to figure out how to replicate this. And we already know how to, this is machine learning is actually based off of human memory and learning. Right. And there's going to be a scientist or an engineer who's going to think beyond human thinking and say, hey, you know what? There's a better way of thinking. There's a better way of learning, right? Like we're only going off of what we think it is, like what humans can do, the limits of our own bodies, right? But some engineer, some brilliant person is going to come up with this idea or a team of brilliant people are going to be like, no, no, no. Like why should we even do that? Like we can do it even better, you know? There's even a better way to do it. And that machine learning is not, might not look, may not look anything like what a human could ever resemble as a human, but it will be better in every possible way in terms of human thinking. Does that make sense? It will be able to create art, no problem, because it will look at art like the way we look at, you know, grade school math from our children, you know? Like it's just super simple. Like, oh yeah, making a fucking video game that, all humans love and enjoy that's super fucking easy right the machine will be like yeah i can know how to do that easy like that's super easy like these are all the elements you need to feed those primitive apes <laughs> you know and we would be like this is the greatest piece of art ever made you know and it'll just be a machine doing it right mm -hmm. like if you don't think that a, a machine could figure us out like our our, our simplest vices <laughs> you know you're you're, you're not prepared for the ultimate end that's going to happen. That's what I'm trying to get at, right? Like what I'm teaching you now is based off of principles and ideas that are pretty consistent, you know? Yeah. yeah. A machine can learn this. The yeah, only reason why a machine- five years to learn this principle. Yeah, it took me a long yeah. time, including all my life experiences. You can simulate all that. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely similar. That's totally a thing you can simulate. It's just that we don't want to believe that's true because again, human arrogance. We would like to think mm -hmm. that there's more. But that's that's just not true, you know. We're going we're going deep, high, uh, super but, deep. But so getting to so to mm -hmm. getting to answering your question though, like the most immediate solution is yes, just pick the job that's going to last the longest. <laughs> because I'm ultimately saying they're all going to go, but there's going to be some that are going to go much later, you know. And I think mm -hmm. the creative type jobs, like being a concept artist, is one of those jobs that is worth learning. Uh, and worth it because there's going to be a lot of people that are able to make realistic and, and awesome stuff from scratch, but they might not be cool, cool ideas because they haven't been practicing cool ideas. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of the machine learning algorithms are like making animations, mm -hmm. uh, body. Uh, like replicating animations, doing great 3D models, uh, creating realistic photo imagery. Like there's that, um, uh, for instance, there's that, uh, 
<clears throat> there is that um hold on there is that uh what you call it uh flight simulator that like basically use machine learning and like the latest rendering techniques to create like these um these amazing um believable landscapes and environments you know yeah like in um in the game right it takes like all this data from like google google maps and shit it's fucking crazy and so you can literally like fly around all around the world i believe in this new flight simulator <laughs> you know but that's all based off of realistic and reliable information that we already have access to mm-hmm. you know that's what i think machine learning will do is stuff like that but it's a flight simulator right like it's it, it's it's supposed to be mostly realistic that is that's the part that i'm saying is not that fascinating like to replicate realism you know but to come up with like the more like exaggerated fantasy stuff that's going to be much harder to to replicate you know mm-hmm. like when i was showing michael that design of the spider right that's like a little bit crazier you know what i mean mm-hmm. That's the kind of stuff. Oh, what? Why did this render come out like garbage? <laughs> um, that's the kind of stuff that people aren't uh, necessarily uh, prepared for um, or training for. They're mostly training like how to draw and do stuff realistic. Oh, there you go. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm telling you to avoid. <laughs> In fact, like I used to teach, I used to teach people how to do. Um, more uh, realistic, uh, a more contemporary design aesthetics, mm-hmm. and I've I've been uh, I've been avoiding teaching this because I don't think it has any value anymore. Hmm. Would you say I should change my trajectory with the current designs and go a little bit more crazy? Uh, I always I, I will suggest that, design. but mm-hmm. but. Uh, but even then, like, there's still some use for some of that stuff. I'm just saying moving forward, if that's all your portfolio has, then, yeah, you might be in trouble, right? Because <laughs> um, you got to think about like this. Like, is there anything that you can't find reference for? That's what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. Okay? Like, like, if I'm designing, like, a, a character for a game, can I just find reference for this character and then just show this to my client? And if the answer is no then that you're doing a good job. You're doing stuff that they probably want to pay you for. Okay. Like I always say, like if a producer could photo bash and replicate some sort of imagery, then you're not, you don't have any value, <laughs> you know, like you gotta like be able to do something that they can't just replicate. Mm-hmm. Make sense? Well, yeah. Yeah, but I wouldn't. That's but true. I wouldn't get too worried about it even then, because even when, let's say, um, you're more realistic, more uh, um, like if the more practical, more realistic looking imagery, uh, even that um, will still have some place. It'll just be in a different realm, like maybe not in concept art, but maybe like in more of just people appreciate your artwork in general, or they just want to learn how to paint like you or draw like you. Like you can be an artist's artist or just someone that's admired, right? You can be an individual rather than a, a cog in the machine, right? Mm-hmm. So there's always a way around it, right? But that's that's the ticket. Well, I'm sorry if I'm taking too much time. Let me know if, uh, if we're going too long. But uh, let's take film, for example. Uh, I feel like, I mean, still uh, in, in movies, Unlike games, uh, most movies are still more grounded and realistic. And I, I mean, I don't think that it'll change anytime soon. <coughs> uh, like there, every year, there's only a few like superhero and fantasy movies that are very crazy. Yeah. But most of it is just humans. You know, it might be historic, it might be contemporary, it might be sci-fi, but it's still realistic. Yes. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those jobs are limited because mm-hmm. if I'm doing a contemporary story, like like a movie about um, my friend 
meeting his wife, whatever, that's the story, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Uh, why do I need a concept artist for that? Yeah, they... Like, you're not wrong. I'm just saying you're, you, you're also missing the point of like, but what's, where's the job for you? You know, <laughs> like, like, are you going to be on set designing khakis? Like, no, right. You're, you're the, the kind of work that you would probably be looking for more of those historical stuff. But even then, like, why wouldn't a, why wouldn't a film like director or producers hire costume designers uh, right. or historical uh, historians to help keep the integrity of the designs, you know? Why would they, why would there be a need for a concept artist? And some people still will believe that they need that, you know, like there will be those purists, like, you know, Christopher Nolan, like still films with film, mm-hmm. you know, he doesn't do digital, right? Yeah. And so there's gonna always be those people, but those are very few still, you know, yeah. like, you don't want to like, uh, you don't want to like necessarily be blindsided is what I'm getting at. Like if you are aware of all of these challenges and you're aware of all of these, you know, these caveats, then by all means go for it. Right. Like, I actually don't want to discourage anybody from doing anything. Right. I just don't want you to be blindsided by like, man, there's like no jobs here. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like don't, don't, don't be shocked is what I'm getting. Like you were fa- fairly warned, you know? Um, like the jobs are going to be in the more extreme and more exaggerated stuff because the stuff you just can't, you can't replicate. There's more value there. Okay. Right. There's more value for somebody who is creative for now. <laughs> for now. Uh, this is a very quick. Someone mentioned that you worked on, uh, uh, what's it called? Love, death and robots. I did. Did you design that, that space alien, that white uh, creature? <laughs> the spider. Yeah, yeah. spider lady yeah I okay. did. well I, di- I didn't know but i was like yeah that's his style, that's style. <laughs> yeah totally yeah that was great i love that shot when it kind of looks like a silhouette of a, of a woman and comes out of the shadow that's, that's great. it looks like the spider lady yeah yeah yeah, yeah i concepted that idea it wasn't not, it wasn't my idea but i concepted that too so uh, it was their team. They came up with that. It was in the story, but it was just uh, I designed how that may look. So mm-hmm. it's cool. It was cool to see. Like it was almost verbatim the way that I concepted it. That rarely did happens. You, did you sculpt it or or just paint? Oh, I painted it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was all two D. That's the, that that's a great show. Like that's like a wet dream of all the concept uh, artists, <laughs> yeah. and all us nerds. I mean, it's like totally. It was great. I liked it a lot too. I am with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope they do more, more episodes or seasons. All right. Thank you. I feel like the the more I hear the whole thing about machine learning, the more I think of a uh, Wally, and everyone just kind of being fat and the machines doing everything for them. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, um, that's, again, a human perception of what we think would happen, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and it's not that it would be wrong, but uh, there, people never thought about the idea that maybe it wouldn't go like that. Maybe it would like happen. Terminator? No, no, no. That, that's another, <laughs> that's another yeah. uh, fascination of what we think would happen. Uh, okay. But nobody's ever thought about the optimistic element of what would happen, which was that nobody would work right like no right. one would actually genuinely work like so you guys want to paint you can do it without the fear of not making money because the machines are taking care of us they're our babysitters right that's pretty and, fascinating actually yeah yeah and so if you wanted to make a video game you go make one it's no big deal you can yeah. play video games all day if you want to it's not, not a problem some people will obviously be doing that but some people won't right some people will feel like they want to exercise and feel healthy and cook meals hang out with their family and their kids right like raise their family, be a part of their part of their lives, be more involved in their communities, right? People don't realize that a lot of the reasons why we don't do these things is because we have to work, right? True. It's not Very because, true. yeah, it's not because humans are built to not be lazy. It's because we have to. There's no alternative uh, unless right. you really go off the grid, right? Right. which is not so, really an option though for so it's like people. yeah so it's like if you wanted to have the benefits of this awesome modern society you have to work 
if you don't right. care about any of that stuff, then you can, yeah, you can live as a farmer or live off the land. That's a thing right. too. That there's people who live in buses and, and road trip around the world and very happy right. and content with their lives. And there's other people that don't want to do that. They just want to like be able to like, you know, go dancing or go, uh, go do karaoke or whatever. Right. You know? And just have good times with their friends. Um, but to do any of that, uh, cost money and it, and it yeah. costs uh, time that you have to sacrifice later somewhere else. So right. there's a there's a good opportunity if we built proper social systems and a mentality around this idea, like stop villainizing laziness, right? Mm -hmm. Laziness is only a villain in a capitalistic environment, right? Right. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. Again, we've we've invented these constructs. Right, because if you right. look at the animal kingdom, you know we wouldn't look at a gorilla and think they're lazy if all they do is sit around all day. Like that's just right. they're nature. not working twelve hours a day. Yeah, they don't <laughs> need to do anything other than hunt and gather food for their family. Uh -huh. and the rest of the time, they're just boning each other and having yeah <laughs> and having chilling. a good time. Yeah, just chilling. Yeah. In fact, if anything, it's actually we're going against our natural order by working so much, mm -hmm. by chasing these these dreams. You know. Right. If I could just teach my class for free like all you guys had to do was maybe like have a merit check like maybe we do portfolio reviews to get in or it's a waiting list yeah. type of system where you guys can get in it's just a matter of time yeah. and i could just teach you guys because i want to not because i need to uh, make money right mm -hmm. i would do that i would do that in a heartbeat if i would teach for free no problem you right. know I, I love teaching yeah, but, but like to be able to love teaching and be able to put a roof over my head, I had to put a price tag on it, you know? Right. Right. Of course. Uh, if, if my housing, my electricity, uh, uh, my food, the things that really are valuable to me, like I, we would be more, I would be more than happy to downgrade if I knew that I didn't have to work, you know? Right. Um, and sustain the type of lifestyle that I wanted. Right. And then there's going to be some people that might have to still do some extra extra activities to get extra access maybe but maybe we can say no everybody can have access to all these things it's just shared amongst the community and the robot right. allows this to happen and and it's not like like um that the robots will be entirely autonomous we can design them in a way that will totally be empathetic to the human experience mm. yeah but we have to begin to start a strong social structure with more social agreements that we have today we have too much disagreements that mm -hmm. nobody would agree on anything and those those disagreements are the great catalyst to this this utopian society that we would potentially yeah. could create for ourselves but if you were to ask me is it possible like is it actually possible to create this scenario like technologically mm -hmm. and uh, 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 with what the tools we have today and all that stuff absolutely it's never been mm -hmm. a matter of whether we could it's a matter as a matter of it's more of a matter of can we get our shit together <laughs> you know mm -hmm. it's never yeah. been a matter of like an actual ability it's more of like there is there's just too much there's just too many variables there's too many things that people disagree on because even if you took a look at like you know you have one concept of like atheism versus religion but even within religion yeah. there's a lot of dis dissent and disagreement between different yeah. religions and even with atheism there's different arguments in in uh, uh disagreements in there you know right there really is and it may be not be as aggressive as you would see in other facets like you see in religion but it's still there you know and um and so really what it comes down to is can we get our shit together and i believe right. that this is the greatest challenge it's not so much the machines are going to take all our jobs it's already happening it's inevitable um, there's a guy uh, in America. He's running for president, named uh, Andrew Yang. He's probably the only one that really oh, understands this. Okay. Yeah, he's yeah. probably the really only one that really understands this problem, right? Okay. okay. Um, and I mean, some other politicians understand it too. Uh, it's just a lot of them aren't really doing anything about oh, it, yeah. or they're not yeah. making the frontier of their position. Where I mm -hmm. believe uh, Yang, Yang Yang, like he okay. um, he has the proper foresight. Okay. Um, like, yes, we have all these other civil problems that we're dealing with, and there's some more immediate problems that we ha are dealing with. But it's racism. 
yeah like racism and all that yeah. kind of stuff they I, I don't even think racism is as bad as people make it out to be specifically okay. in america um okay. and it won't matter if everybody's out of the job and and there's no structure to save them there's no safety yeah. like then everybody's gonna be pissed all of them you know yeah. and and that's gonna be a real shit show dude and I so feel like- Oh, go ahead. And so, so really, when it comes down to is that you know th- these are the kind of the facets that I think people aren't focusing on, and, and we should. Yeah, yeah. You were gonna say? I mean, if, uh, no, yeah, I was just gonna say like, uh, I'm, so I live in the. I'm right now between Colorado and uh, LA, just kind of going back and forth for work, but um, I come from Venezuela, uh, so you know dictatorship uh, like uh, communism country that went to hell uh i was born is the most dangerous <coughs> city in the world most than you're sitting in the world now with the highest inflation in the world yeah. um it's kind of it's not what, what you're saying it's all concepts that i very much believe especially as technology makes these things more accessible i think it's very possible uh however i'm always interested in um how humans are going to specifically the bunch of the group of humans that are tend to be uh, uh evil for lack of a better word uh, are not going to somehow screw the the other people over that's what i'm curious about yeah um, so there's the majority of us are actually good the majority yeah. of humans are, are actually great it's the it's the minority of of humans that are not great um loud, and, yeah and and the, the the minority are also the same kinds of people who are able to be greedy allow greed to to allow them to screw people over including complete nations like venezuela right yeah yeah um it's not a matter of the majority it's actually this small group of people right that like for instance in america we have a small group of people in our country who are running our show right Right. And and some of them are some of the greediest, most sociopathic <laughs> yeah. people ever. But they're Definitely. playing the game. They're playing the game really good. And they're winning really good. I had yeah. a friend who was really upset one time about somebody's interaction with somebody he had. And he was mm-hmm. basically saying to me, he's like, it's all right, though. Karma will get them. And I okay. looked at him and I was like, karma is not a thing, my man. And he's <laughs> just like, what? And I was like, yeah, like, that person may go their whole life living a very happy, oh, a very successful yeah. life and die a very happy and successful person. Yeah. That one, like there are evil people who've lived on our earth who've done some of the most craziest, most epically terrible things yeah. and died or went out or never died. Like King Jong Un yeah. uh, died just because he was so rich and fat. He, he right. died from a basic heart attack, dude. Right. He died the same way a lot of us Americans died. You know? <laughs> yeah. Something like a third did, of Americans or something. Yeah. He, he didn't die because of what he, like, up and comments, you know? Karma. Yeah. It didn't happen. Uh, even yeah. Hitler, like, he took his own life. Right. He's like, all right, yeah. I lost. Like, we would have loved to keep him alive and torture that dude, right? Oh, yeah. Like, what, yeah. Re- what he really would have deserved. No, he's like, all right, I lost, whatever. He took the easy way it's, out. Same with uh, Fidel Castro and Stalin and things like that, too. Yeah, so this idea that people will get what they yeah. deserve, it's, yeah. it's not the world we live in. Um, and so, uh, you know, like, like, this is my point, right? Like, and so I would say, you know, uh, we just need to get our act together. <laughs> yeah. And, and just to get back to art, to make sure yeah. that we kind of stay on topic. Yeah, um, for sure. I have the, a question about that too. Yeah, we we got the wrap up now though. I have to like get going. Oh. Um, oh, okay. Um, with that being said though, like one of the things that I would encourage you guys to understand is that like there's there's nothing wrong with you know being prepared for the future, like trying to learn new tools, 3D and all stuff. Mm-hmm. But there's also there's nothing wrong with just like sticking to one thing. In fact, I encourage that too. Because there's a way to make money from that as well. Because like, because of these expanding industries, there are opportunities. All you got to do, and I mentioned this earlier. Now, whether I like the game or not, right? Like the game mm-hmm. that is being played in our in the capitalistic environment, whether mm-hmm. whether you like the game or not, the game is actually easily played. 
You just got to do what other people aren't willing to do. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the more you can do that, the more you will be successful. And this, this includes yeah. being incredibly greedy. Most people will not do that, including myself. My company could have yeah. expanded quite literally. Uh, there's several times where this, like even somebody who told me, he's like, he's like, dude, you're, you're selling your tutorials way too cheap. Like you can sell them for even more and make like this higher. And he was like giving me all these metrics and stuff. Uh -huh. And then my response to that was, uh, yeah, but then people wouldn't be able to afford it. The people that the majority of people wouldn't be able to afford my tutorials anymore. Yeah. It's like, I'm not doing it because I want to make tons and tons of money. I'm doing it because, uh, I love to teach and it, it it's a good middle ground. I can make enough money to sustain and I also can teach people or oh, more people. Yeah. yeah. And he's, well, like, actually, you're, you're, he's like, you're, you're fucking it up now. And I was like, <laughs> I, I get it, man. And this guy is very successful. It's not like what he was saying was wrong. Cause he, he runs a school too. And it does really well in terms of uh, mm -hmm. monetary gain. Uh, I just don't care for it. And that's, that's my, mm -hmm. that's my specific uh, opinion, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't think it's necessarily greedy to go that much further. Like what he was suggesting. I don't think that was actually wrong. I don't have any objections to the principle of what he was explaining. It's just, that's just not how I roll. And so- It's subjective too in a way, right? Yeah, that, that's different from then like, like he was doing it, it's still earnest. It's different than like making people's lives miserable. Right. Um, for the sake of making more money. That's different. He was just, he was just being a little bit more scarce with his resources and more pricey yeah. uh, on yeah. that. And there's nothing wrong with his approach. It makes more money for sure. And so, so my point is, is that like, you know, whatever you guys decide to do, I'm all for that. Yeah. Anyways, I'm not, I gotta go go now. Uh, okay. Thanks for the great stuff, guys. Um, there's there's gonna be a moving of the class. So Wednesday we have class usually, but I'm going to be moving it um, to Thursday. And the reason why is because I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna be at Adobe Max uh, this oh, so. week, and I have. I have to get my other doctor's appointment in. And the only time I can get was the morning of Wednesday. So it's like, I'm going to be super busy and I have a doctor's appointment. And so okay. we're just going to move the class one day over. Friday will still be there. I'll give you guys appropriate type of homework uh, during that class. So don't worry too much, but uh, you guys have that extra day to work even harder on all the stuff you guys are doing too. So definitely. Okay. Right, uh, by the way, are you okay? We send you messages through Skype. Benches, yeah, so. I, I don't check too often, but you feel free. And if I do happen to check, I'll respond. Okay, yeah, cool. not a problem. All right, guys. Okay. Peace out, friends. Have a great Thank weekend. You, See you guys next week. You too. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.